Devil Hunters Chainsaw Man Chapter 134 titled Ordinary Happiness has Denji wrestling with the ordinary life he wants or thinks he wants. Big Chainsaw Man has been revealed. Was my theory correct? We'll find out shortly because let's start from the beginning as we discover Denji. Walking by numerous televisions and students hearing the mixed opinions of the public perception of Chainsaw Man. News of the prophecy has also started to spread with some students even adding that their school will become legendary if Chainsaw Man defeats Nostradamus because well hey Chainsaw Man protected their school and and he's a part of their student body as well. Now, there is one little off side note where one of the students laughs and says, Nostradamus isn't a devil, you know? And if you're a fan of Fujimoto, you read several of his works. Sometimes I look at that and I'm like, that's a random comment. But now I also think about what if Nostradamus is the devil and that was just a funny way of Fujimoto making that a slight foreshadow. Maybe I'm looking too much into it, but hey, if Nostradamus is the devil himself, I'm all about that. Arriving home, Denji begins to clean Naita's hair with a ladder talking about how the church of Chainsaw Man is clashing with the police. Denji reveals here that he decided to give up on transforming into Chainsaw Man as he believes that not only is the life he has now is perfect, but he doesn't want to sacrifice Naita's life for the sake of his own happiness. Now, Denji is a very selfish guy. We know what he wants, that he wants to be idolized and adored by the public. Whether it's a subconscious tick to be wanted because he lost Aki in power in part one, or, well, he just truly is a selfish individual and, and he wants to be glamorized by the public because, well, hey, who doesn't want to be adored by the public or well by just many people to know that, hey, you feel wanted and accepted in life. He ultimately does the good thing and sacrifices his own happiness to protect Naita, which is very admirable. We know how much he loves Naita and to the point of giving up his own happiness, I think just shows how much Denji has grown. But as we discover real quickly in this chapter and he speaks with Pochita of all people, I'm so upset Pochita doesn't respond back, but he tells Pochita, hey, this is the life we wanted, right? Like, we got everything we wanted. We, we got a house. We got our loved ones. We got our dogs. I mean, there's really nothing else that we can argue for. He truly loves being Chainsaw Man. That is his life. Denji's life is nothing of a normal life. Having the hero of hell infused within your heart is nothing but an ordinary life, all right? If people recall the story of the town mouse and the country mouse, we discovered that Denji is not a country mouse. He is a town mouse. The biggest gains can be yours if you're willing to put up with the biggest risk involved. Still awake, Denji begins channel surfing only to stumble upon another speech being performed by Haruka. A member of the crowd raises numerous concerns regarding both the recruitment demographics and collateral damage caused by the church. And you know, Haruka gives his politically correct answer by saying, hey, you know, the Ministry of Defense, we inform them before we do anything. And we're also experienced hunters getting the approval from the school, which again, if you think about it, why would any school just allow any high school kid to go out and confront devils in a world where public safety exists, right? But that's neither here or there because Haruka replies that the entire church has received the teachings from Chainsaw Man directly before offering to let him speak to the public himself. Denji rushes into the phone only to look in shock as a random hunter claims to be Chainsaw Man. Okay, I don't want to get too excited, but I made a Chainsaw Man theory video where I just said, and let's go ahead and say it, a Koku Segi is the fake Chainsaw Man. I found out today, Segi's name translate in Japanese, Justice. What did we discover in this chapter? That the fake Chainsaw Man has formed a contract with the Justice Devil. And I mentioned in my theory video that the class president and Yuko, both who have contracted with the Justice Devil, targets individuals who seek their own interpretation of justice. This fake Chainsaw Man has assumed the identity of Chainsaw Man to further their agenda. Why? Because they're obsessed with Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man is this symbol of justice to many people or in the context of this chapter. Haruka himself, what's wrong with following one sense of justice is the same? Japanese citizens in an act of self-sacrifice. I also said in my theory video that the Justice Devil did form a contract with someone in the Devil Hunters Club. And now that we see this fake Chainsaw Man society become a thing, it seems like more and more things are pointing in the direction of my theory being correct. Anyway, fake Chainsaw Man says he fights to create a world without devils. In a devilous world, Adam and Eve will. And then at this point, Denji's already fuming. He's like, look, man, I became Chainsaw Man for none of those reasons. I died a gazillion times. People were calling me Chainsaw Man on their own. And then this is where we are today. There's no ulterior motives. And as we see, he begins to rant, stating that he never did what he did for any ultimate goal and that people began to call him Chainsaw Man in recognition of his achievements. As Denji breaks down in front of the TV, Naita comforts Denji. And yes, we know this is true. The whole thing of Pochita finding Denji, becoming Chainsaw Man, 
and this wasn't for an act of justice to defeat the ultimate evil. It's like, man, Denji was just trying to get by, eat some bread, and find a girl he can eventually date. But I did want to go back on that comment where the fake chainsaw man says, Adam and Eve will, and then Denji interrupt. Uh, I wonder if that's going to placate into what happens in the further developing chapters here. And the more I think about it, where if Chainsaw Man was dealing with Makima and control and Denji fighting for individuality and freedom, Chainsaw Man Part 2 is playing the ideologies of like, what is the justice and interpretation and definition of justice for many people? Justice can be perceived in many different ways. Although Chainsaw Man is a hero for many people, it came at the destruction of society, buildings, many deaths. Chainsaw Man saved cats. That's great. But, you know, we see students and old people die in the beginning when the cockroach devil did that cool, you know, Spider-Man homage. But I really like the sense of direction of where Chainsaw Man Part 2 is going. We'll talk a lot more about this in the Chainsaw Man live discussion video later on today. But again, if you haven't seen the Chainsaw Man theory video, whether it's Segi and Koku, if it looks like a duck and act like a duck, I don't know. You're going to have to find out. Skip to the seven minutes mark and you'll know what I'm talking about. Take care guys.